Hello. Okay, Hello. recording has begun. So, yeah, we'll start with the brief two guys. So Central and I did, and whoever else was here, uh, did some pre-categorizing. Um, uh, isn't here. They were here. Is both here? They're here. They were here. Or they, they are, are here. Yeah. They are here. We are with a quiet boat. Yeah, I'm. Can you hear me now? Like, can you no. hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. much better. Awesome. So, some I tried to put some notes. Um, feel free to interrupt this if you have questions or comments. So, this PR, these are nominated PRs. Mostly a notification. It's a PR to stabilize aspects of maybe uninit. And the primary question I wanted to raise today is like. Do we need to schedule this for deeper discussion? Are people feeling like they are ready to check their boxes uh, or at least ready to read first? Uh, are you phrasing the question is, oh, go ahead, Josh. Oh, no, it was, it was me, um, Boats. Oh, sorry. Um, but uh, my only concern is about deprecating maybe uninitialized and um, you mean in the schedule thereof? Yeah, yeah, because obviously we have to eventually, but it's... Um, you think it's per perhaps too soon, or...? Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm worried that it's uh, too widely used and it'll be really disruptive and we need to figure out a way to communicate well. Like, so why so are you concerned that it's disruptive to, to deprecate it? Like, we want people to move off of it once there's an alternative, right? Yeah, I just, like, I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, I want to make sure that we are communicating well before they, like, that ideally people would, who are attentive would know about it before they, I mean, I don't know, we have like a process where we do it three months later or three, two releases later, later, right? And that's like, mm -hmm. fine, it's just that this so, is a, I'm, I, just, I don't know if this is, it seems to me like this is a pretty widely used API, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, and so I would like to like have a sense of the impact. So, so we can know how important it is for us to try to communicate with people about it. I feel so, like, so, I just want to report an idea, sorry, Central. Do, can, maybe it would be good for one of us to prepare a sort of blog post saying like, we are deprecating uninitialized starting this date. Here is what you should be doing instead. You know, maybe I don't know exactly where this should be floated, but basically a document, right? That I would point propose, people at and we can post in advance. I, I would propose that Ralph does this. Uh, I think he would be right. It's a good, good. I think it's a good idea. That if if you were interested, he would uh, be a good person to do it. Yeah, if he has time, that is. Um, yeah. As as for deprecation, I've proposed two two releases, which is like three months from it being stable. Which is, I mean, you would have some time, um, even on some more time on nightly. Uh, but I think that if we notice that okay, it was too much, there were too many too many regressions, we can push it back some more time. Uh, we can Sorry, I'm, I think I'm a little confused. Why are there any regressions due to deprecating something? Yeah. I'm sorry, not, 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 not regressions, but I mean, uh, if, we want to, if we want to give it more time before deprecating. Like, the warning is... Deprecating something. Go ahead. I, I think you were going to say whatever. You should, I think you probably... Open. Okay. I was just going to say deprecating something can absolutely lead to a regression if somebody has deny warnings turned on and suddenly they get a deprecation warning. Yeah, that's true. All right, so I, 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 around, I, I, it's trivial to add and allow deprecated to the relevant expression or similar. It's just a matter of uh, it breaks the build until you fix the build, and it would be nice to be gentle in that regard. I think we can just be flexible based on the uh, on like what data. Uh, yeah, that's all, I guess, I mean, that's all I really wanted to say was I think what we wanted to get data on actually how widely it's used. Okay. And, I mean, so so I guess what I'm saying is that like finding out that it's more widely used would want me to introduce the war deprecation warning earlier rather than later, which seems like it's sort of the opposite of what you all are angling for. But I guess we don't have to like focus on that since. I mean, I think it's more that we want to focus not that it's when we introduce the warning, probably as much as how much work we do to communicate with people about. Mm -hmm. What they should do. Yeah, no, yeah, no. I think that I think that like over communicating here is great. I think we, uh, we can even like include it in the blog post, like uh, write a bit. Well, one point three. Yeah, and I'd love, uh, I'd love if we could have like the 
the like long rusty explainer or something like link to the blog post or something and be right. like here you can read all about it like i think that would be great yeah i think we need to link it to the blog post because the blog post will be pretty long this release um we'll make it as an issue i don't know all right there's a related note I think is worth mentioning, by the way. I've noticed that people often have to do a lot of work pulling together the release notes close to a release and figuring out what things are relevant, and that also seems prone to causing things to get missed. So on that basis, I'm wondering if it would be a good idea in general to adopt a more general policy for if you're making a change to the compiler that is going to introduce a release note worthy thing, that you ought to include the release note change in the patch series. To mean in the PR itself. Yeah, your PR could add reasonable descriptive text to the release note, and then that draft release note forms the actual release note. We do try to do that, but it doesn't always happen. Uh, Probably rarely. We try to do that. We uh, one one new change that uh, so. Usually we we make the release release notes uh, PR like one week before release or even right. later than that, and the blog post uh, gets done like a few like one two three days before. Yep. Can I, uh, uh, as a really general um, like technical thought, how hard would it be to have a tag that is something like this needs a rel note? On yeah, yeah. called rel notes. Well, yeah, okay. Do we have any actual automated checking that says you can't merge a PR on a route thing tagged rel node unless it includes a change to the release notes? No. Um, we do, we usually don't do that. We 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 change the release no, release note. Uh, like the release team uh, has one person that does that. Uh, Take it to the release team. Let's move on. I, I think this is the conversation we've gone on. Got fair, I just wanted yeah. to talk to you. I think I think the the, pro, the the conclusion here is that like we have we have a process around this and I think that it like it, it's mostly working right like mm. if you, if you fine. if you have ideas just add it to the release channel in 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 Disco, at, on Discord sorry all right next issue six oh three hundred uh, this is a proposal to basically not warn about. Things in FFI boundaries, if I understand, with the with the lint that we have for this, unless in particular to allow things like this, which um, are supposed are represented as a pointer in practice, and which the FFI the unsafe code guidelines proposal also sort of guarantees in some cases. And the question is, uh, wait, uh, so sorry, Nico, you meant that to be non-null of U32, right? Yes, sorry, my mistake. Absolutely, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I thought this would probably be non-controversial as long as we're conservative in our choices. Uh, I think conservative in uh, the choices would be good, but uh, it makes sense to me. Core pointer non-null makes perfect sense, or in particular, option of non-null. Uh, to what extent is non-zero reasonable to mix with a pointer without a warning? Because that one concerns me a little more. As long as it's a U size, I don't know. Um, not sure what you mean, mix with a pointer, actually. Like these well, are. I guess it doesn't really matter. You can safely assume that it has the same representation when it's rep or C as a pointer. Right, but here I don't. Unless I'm confused, you only you know non-zero or non-null. I mean non-zero U-size. You can be sure that it's a U-size. Yeah, if it's a U-size, I'm wondering, can you reasonably assume no option of non-null U-size is always the same representation as a pointer? If we can assume that, then that seems fine. The same as U in pointer T. OK. That, that seems reasonable. Oh, I guess we should probably do an FCP. I agree with that, uh, Central. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm fine with this, personally. So this is this is also not just just to just just to clarify. Um, it's not just about not linting. It's about also about making it defined behavior. Uh, right. I mean, I I consider this already defined behavior. Right. I also do. Uh, I I mean, I, well. There's no way we're gonna break it. I also think like, this is great. Like this is the, F, the literal FFI function can have a better like 
uh, signature. signature. That's awesome. So I'm assigning you central to write an SCP proposal. Good. I'd actually be happy to write this one up if uh, nobody else minds. It's no right. problem. Works better. Yeah, so it's assigned to review the actual PR. Yeah, but I'm happy to Josh write it right up wherever Josh wants to write up. Sounds like he's excited. Okay. <laughs> I mean, reviewing the PR is sort of separate from like deciding yeah. whether, whether yeah. we do it or not. Okay. So, all right. Five nine one four eight. Okay, so I don't want to spend too much time because I think we have enough to discuss later and we're taking a little longer than I hoped. But this is a proposal for unchecked math and the question is... This is this is a knit. You you mean unsafe FN, right, on all of these? They're, <laughs> this, I copied this from the PR. They should be unsafe to invoke for sure. What these do is they would add things and make it undefined behavior if they overflow. And the reason to do that is that LLVM will do optimizations if it knows that overflow can't happen, that it otherwise can't do. Um, yeah. So this is not just don't totally worry different from, to, from like wrapping around, right? Um, Taylor, they're not unsafe because they're intrinsic, so they're in play, unsafe even though it doesn't say unsafe. All right. Uh, what are I want them to show up in Rust doc and say unsafe next to them, and when you call them, I want you to get a you, you, to get you wouldn't actually get these in Rust. Doc. Not not the purpose exactly. of this meeting to discuss Rust doc. No. I'm gonna put this here, but sure. I I'm just saying like like the, the, the they're unsafe FNs. How, however, that's implemented does it doesn't matter. But so yes, yeah. here's the if question: they're, If they're unsafe, it's marginally less terrifying. It's still terrifying, but uh, if. Does, is this really desperately needed separate from having this is guaranteed to wrap? Yeah, that's the point. There are optimizations you can't do if you know you have to preserve wrapping semantics. So, so uh, Robin uh, made a good point that um, if you scroll to the, uh, if you click on the issue. Or I mean, like load effective address is an obvious case, right? And then you scroll to their first column. Oh, you're too much. Uh, up, up, up. Uh, yeah, mm, sorry. Uh, Not Robin. Or... Yeah, Robin. Robin's first comment. Scroll down. Yeah, that one. Uh, is that people will like use this when they don't need to. I'm also looking at uh, their next comment on March 28th, uh, if you scroll down further, about uh, for wrapping arithmetic, you can't do better than. I would like to understand much better why it is that the compiler can't optimize this if it's guaranteed to wrap, and can optimize this if you promise that if it uh, overflows that it's in undefined behavior. Okay, I, this is more time than I want to spend, so I'm gonna post punt this for next meeting. But I, th I there are good reasons. Maybe we want to. The yeah, main question I, I want so, to figure out is: Do we need an RFC or what? This, these are intrinsics. I think Lang doesn't really care. The compiler team can add these. If anyone wants to expose these, we can talk about it. But as intrinsics, I don't think we have any reason to say that these shouldn't happen. As yep. intrinsics, yes. If or they the are exposed, we do, but otherwise not. They're intrinsics. They should go in the compiler. People can experiment them and find out if they're worth exposing more more than that. Sure. I don't. I don't think we want to talk more than that. Yes, I, I, I agree with that. that. Okay. Um, so. So okay. Why I can write we... that if you want. Ah, great. That would be wonderful. Um, uh, why? Fine. Um, okay. So we, let's let's skip Dante to wait and come back to these. I don't think there's anything too burning in here. Yep. So, um, all right. I'm gonna hand over at this point to votes. I think. Cool. So. Uh, we said last week that we would talk about um, 408 loops, but I think that we'll be able to get through that pretty quickly, hopefully. And um, then, assuming that, that goes well, then I would like to then also spend time talking about the plan for stabilizing an async await MVP and scheduling that effectively. Um, so, 
the whole four way loops thing is about making sure that the we want to be able to loop over stream someday if we or if we want to do that that we haven't boxed ourselves into a corner with the await syntax that we choose where then like we can't find a good syntax for this um and so uh essentially the solution that i think will would be best would be that um we don't change the syntax of for loops at all um but streams processed by a for loop yield um futures element and so then you can await that feature to get the item rather than having some specific modified for loop syntax for processing streams um the problem with this is that uh it's not possible to make streams implement into iterator because that feature uh, borrows the state of the stream and so you cannot have multiple like next futures on a stream uh, existing with overlapping lifetimes <laughs> and so uh, that means essentially that streams uh, are not iterators but they are streaming iterators which are uh, just you know just iterators whose items have a lifetime tying them to the bar of next so that you cannot have multiple next items at the same time and um, essentially it seems to me that when we have gats and we can express streaming iterator we will want to be able to process streaming iterators with for loops and so that's already a problem we need to solve and so we can just make it possible to go convert from a stream to a streaming iterator we also need to change the name of streaming iterator because it has nothing to do with stream um, like it's a different concept that we're like using this metaphor for two different things. Um, yeah, can, sorry to, to interrupt you. Can you yeah. clarify really quickly when you say like implement iter into iterator, you're not talking about the async thing that we're calling streams. When I talk about into iterator in what context? Right, but like, e like even if we had didn't have like streaming streams, like they still like if we had yeah. today's stream, it wouldn't implement it into iterator. Streams they're not synchronous. Can't right? implement into iterator because it, the item is supposed to be the next future, and the next future borrows. Even though even though the output type, like the item type of the stream, doesn't borrow, the the future that you would be getting does borrow. So even regular streams, not streaming streams, are streaming iterators, not iterators. Um, oh, oh! I'm sorry. So you're imagining that the 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 future, what what future is here, is is an impl future. Yeah. In for future and stream. So you're you're basically saying just like loop, let future equal stream dot next. Yeah, is, it's is essentially what, what it is. would be. And oh, okay. I don't, I'm not. I don't. I think that the, also the point is to not. I think that you have raised good points for this is actually worth adding, but. If we ever do want to add it, I think this is the solution: is to make it streams act like they just yield features as like an iterator. Interesting. Um, okay. So we already want to make streaming iterators possible by for loops. If we have them, um, then basically this all I works mean, out. The, the, uh, the issue there is that you don't know whether or not it's none right before you before you resolve it. Uh, yeah, I thought about that. I think that we can. It's going to have a slightly. We would have to have a slightly higher overhead, basically. If we did that, like, because we'd have to mutate the state of the iterator or the streaming iterator type that wraps this stream, we'd have to have. Like, oh, like, okay. Well, I mean, we can chat about this offline because I'm I'm not sure that like I'm following, but but I I, I grant that you have thought about this. So, <laughs> so, it, so, so the basic idea is that we can make them like the conclusion is sort of just that I think that we can now we don't have to worry about four await loops because if we add this, we'll want to add it this way where streams just to yield futures and if yeah. i remember correctly from our discussion on discord use i think we said that uh, we would uh use into streaming iterator or something in the yeah exactly um so we would change for loops to take into streaming iterator instead of into iterator and then all iterators implement into streaming iterator and yeah that back. makes a lot of sense yeah and i just sort of don't use this lifetime parameter basically mm. Wow. That makes me that, that makes me extremely happy because uh, like streaming iterators are really nice and it's nice that we can better. right. So we already are going to want to solve that problem. So it seems like we could just piggyback on that if we want to solve it for stream. Also, that's the idea. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Um, but yeah, Taylor, we should actually investigate the none thing. I yeah, because the the none thing is like I'm having a hard time working out in my head how that 
works, but otherwise this seems cool. Like, I think, I don't know. Yeah, I think you're right. I thought it worked, but I haven't actually written the code that would actually, I proved like, that works. So we should actually look like the, the thing, the thing that I'm imagining in my head looks more like, like a weight break, <laughs> like a weight yeah. break on kind of like thing, but I don't like know that that's what you're imagining. So yeah, it's also interesting that if you wrote like continue without awaiting the future, the next thing you'd get would still just be the same element in the, in the stream. Yeah. Which is pretty counterintuitive. Yeah. Well, <laughs> So like I can't quite make this work, but it, it's a cool idea. I, I'm like excited by it. Yeah, I think that so in the hopefully, hopefully that's easy to lint against. <laughs> yeah. this is also where, like, I, I yeah. think that it's pretty clear that Bones' suggestion would allow us to separate the concepts of integrating this in a for loop versus the syntax. And I agree with the point of it's not that we have to commit to making this the syntax, it's that if we're gonna do it, this sounds like a reasonable approach and we should try to achieve the property of let's make it orthogonal to the await syntax. I would personally love this, but like in my head right now, I'm not convinced of that because I haven't like seen the code that makes this work. So one mm. question as like a backup, uh, like, like let's assume this, this didn't work. Uh, so yeah. one question to Nico and Felix. Uh, or is Felix still uh, here? Um, here? You're here. Uh, cool. Um, like, could we do a type-based, um, could we use some type-based semantics in lowering, so like, uh, or or not do it in lowering and uh, do it in a later stage, so, so we type check it first and then we, uh, Give it semantics. Yeah, I have often thought for loop is not that great a candidate to do in here lowering. Like it's nice, but it's also very simple to type check, and we could do it in mere desugaring time just as easily. Um, right. Yeah, just as easily. But so I think that's certainly on the that would be. So we could have different desugarings for. We, yeah, we, you could imagine us saying we. It's not. It's the kind of thing I'm not like wild about in the type checker, but we already do it from place to place. Right. To try to avoid it, but sort of saying, well, first we'll try it as an iterator. If that seems like it's not going to work, then we'll try it. I'm, I want to point out that like some streams are both streams and iterators. So right. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's going to be uh, a, yeah. A little, you have to pick which one you use. You can use yeah this one first and otherwise that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like it's like fallback, which um, I can see giving you some weird. Right. That's why I, would, I prefer to avoid fallback based. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but like if, if, if we have to and we have no other choice, we could do it. If we have to and we have no other choice, I would be convinced that we should not do anything like this. <laughs> I think that is a possible. Yeah. I think it's also a, definitely a viable outcome. So we just, the way to loop over a stream would be, well, right. let's sum next equals. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Um, or alternatively, some kind of uh, mapping uh, combinator. Right, yeah. I mean, and Taylor's made the argument to me that you almost always actually want to do for each concurrent, which could not be, this, like, which is a... Yeah, so it's, no it's very possible this isn't actually what people want very often. Yeah, there's so. actually a JS lint for await inside of a loop. Um, <laughs> like, or sorry, an ES lint now. <laughs> Um, but uh, because because of this exact reason of that, like it, you won't be concurrently processing all the elements in the stream, you'll be con like processing one at a time. Yeah. It'd be really yeah. interesting if uh, we had some future way to provide, no pun intended, to provide a four parallel in uh, native mm -hmm. Rust syntax. But let's ignore that one for the moment, and I well, think we, we, we have it. Yeah, right we have it in the futures crate. I mean, as a combinator, yeah. Yeah, as a combinator. I meant in the context of native loop syntax and parallelism, but let's ignore that for the moment. I, mean, I just don't like, there's just a lot of weird questions in that around like, what would that actually do? Like, how to break yeah. And definitely the question precedent mark do. is combinators, right? Rayon also has. Yeah. 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 yeah, so, um, but I think that I feel comfortable saying if we ever have this syntax, it will work this way and not, and we don't need to worry about like, having a specific 408 syntax that we need to worry about. 
I think I, if we, I feel like I'm the least convinced about that, but I also am the most convinced that we just shouldn't do this. So. Right. I mean, because that is one of, the, <laughs> one of the reasons why we, I think it's probably fine. So we just could also just. Do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, echo Taylor's uh, point from my C sharp code that we do here that whenever we wait inside the loop or I tend to end up rewriting it later into some weird combination of C sharp stuff to make them run at the same time instead. Mm. Oh. So if we're comfortable with saying that if we ever do this, we hope this would be how it works and then we should not think too much about four weight loops anymore. Um, can move on to talking about the schedule for stabilization. Um, so we would like to stabilize in 137, which branches on July 4th. Um, obviously, that depends on our ability to meet the deadlines necessary in order to actually achieve that. Um, but a way to do that is to start by actually establishing a schedule that we expect to maintain. Um, so from the Langton perspective, the big blocker is, of course, the await syntax decision. Um, and so I looked at the, at the dates and I think that we should commit to having the decision made by May 23rd, um, which is the meeting three weeks from now. Um, I think that we should also, we should go to that now and then communicate to the community that that is when the decision will be made by. That way there's an understanding, everyone has an understanding of what's going to happen. And then that also gives us time to make the decision. And then after the decision, there'll be time from when we've made it until we make a stabilization report so people can like process their feelings about the decision that we made before we make a stabilization report. Um, um, do we think from the, uh, from the implementation perspective, uh, are, we, uh, are we on time to meet that deadline? Uh, yes, I think we do. Um, or as Nico and Taylor both do. Um, and I th think that, uh, uh, I mean, there's a, the last section of this document is other stabilization blockers where we could talk about that more if there's more concrete things, mm -hmm. but. Um, the two ones yeah. that, so it seems like there is, the generators are too big and uninhabited variables, which will also be resolved by the changes in in the so no, yeah, I'm not. And there's a peer for that. I think we're going to solve that problem. I'm not entirely sure if that would ought to be a blocker, regardless. But um, like well, the soundness hole has to be. Yes, I'm not sure. I thought you were talking about the size of. Uh, well, I I assumed they would sort of yeah, okay. be fixed by the same thing. Yeah, that seems correct. Um, I mean, I think that. I would like to talk a little bit about what are the things, like these other stabilization blockers, make sure we're all on the same page with what pieces we need so we can be making sure they get done. Um, and I think the other question that is touched on is like how, for things that are performance or, you know, it could be better. <laughs> um, I've been assuming that's not like a real blocker per se, that's something we can continue to improve. Mm -hmm. um, but I think main thing would be that we want to communicate right and that's the problems. second for the, the third bullet on this list of other blockers that we need to like i mean I, there's been some stuff on reddit about it not zero cost abstraction or whatever for reasons that are like basically like we don't have the perfectly optimized version that we know is possible yet is sort of what it comes down to it seems like so I, i'm i'm personally fine with it not being 100 percent a zero cost abstraction so. and some known shortcomings with like tls whatever yeah yeah we need we need to be communicating that we know that they're shortcomings and we intend to fix them in the long term and this is not we're not saying yeah this. i've been doing my best yeah, I've been doing my best to respond to those Reddit threads that are basically like, I wrote a hot loop around pulling a generator that does literally nothing, and it's slower than calling this other code that does literally nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, so I think that we should just, um, it just, yeah, we basically, it's like just some of the same things with this memo initialize things. We need blog posts, we need to be actually, I think after the meta working group meeting, I think that this is the theme that we're finding, I think, right now, is that we need to communicate better with the community about mm -hmm. for the status. So, uh, the issue, um, so th there is one async await unclear issue, uh, which is like box 
dying some trait doesn't work. And that, that one concerns me much more than zero cost abstractions or whatnot. But uh, that, that's just a bug. It's the same thing in infiltrate. It's not like... like right. It, it, does, it does work if you manually coerce it yourself. It's just that like right now, the way I'm typing it, like, inference doesn't line up nicely. Ah, I see. Okay, that makes it. It's just that the coercion doesn't the coercion doesn't get pushed back far enough. Mm. It's just a bug. Mm. But it's a bug it's you like, think we can fix. So we can certainly fix it. It's not even like that hard to fix. There's already an open issue that fixing that like discussing how to fix it. So uh, okay, good. Like, this this was discussed earlier because you have you have similar issues when you use like try combinators like when you use question mark in a in an async fn. Uh, but then you have like a return that doesn't use a result value. It'll like infer the res the return type to be the incorrect type and give you a like a, a an error that makes less sense than the way one we want to give you. And and fixing that is the same, basically the same thing as fixing this. So. Cool. One thing I would like to talk about is this documentation aspect. I think it would be really great if we, in general, but also here, had sort of explainers talking about the feature, about what it is, and probably laying out some of these shortcomings. I know there was like an async book. It was, I don't know what the status of that book is. Um, what exists here? What should exist? Uh, are you asking specifically about async await? Because like the goal of that was more to be like, with, like tutorial style or like book style introduction to the system. And, like. I, I think that that's a, a good thing to, to like ship, but it's not. It's, you I'm know, it's asking not designed specifically to... about async await, and maybe future, but that's like retroactive. Um, With respect to stabilizing, I think we need quite a thorough report. Like this is a big stabilization, and so it makes sense that the report also be big and thorough. So what, when it comes to the test suite. Uh, Along those lines, Central, I was going to say that one thing I found is kind of nice is somebody, people who are not doing implementation are often good at putting out corner cases that don't occur to implementers. And I'm wondering, I know you love to make tests. Uh, you're into the idea of looking over the test suite and trying to see if you, if there are corners that you think might be worth testing. And if not, if not you, I think we should find people to do it. I think everyone should review the tests. I think that's part of reviewing any any stabilization. Uh, but yes, I, I, I think the question is try to look at them. Uh, but it's not my area of expertise, so I'm perhaps not the best person. But I will look. I think that Nico was saying that it would be good to have you go over and specifically like try and write tests and confirm that it like matches the behavior you'd expect, given that you're not the person who implemented it, because so far I think I'm the only person who's written those tests, and mm. I also implement it, so it makes sense that it makes sense to me. Like, That's so kind of what I am saying. Um, hmm. It doesn't have to be you, but I think it should be so. Let me rephrase. I perhaps don't have as many expectations to check. So, and that's fine. I don't know if it needs to be you. I, I'm just thinking that in, in past, I have sometimes, for example, gone over an RFC and read through the RFC and said, OK, without looking at the code, what are the tests like that I would do right. as I went through? And I think that would be a potentially interesting exercise. Um, but, uh, but I guess to come, for the documentation, I don't know what, what I think we want. I think we want like something that says, that documents what, what async fn does. This is when you do async fn, it will desugar into a function that returns a future. Um, you can use async move blocks. It kind of shows the patterns we expect people to use. I'm mm -hmm. not really sure if we yeah, have so like, something that you can read that tells you that. Yeah, so there are existing chapters in the, the async book that do that that would probably be good, easy things to pull from. Um, I mean, I, a lot of that, the big issue with the async book, right, is just that a lot of it has fallen out of date because I haven't been continually updating it in response to all of the various changes. So, like, we'll just have to go through and revamp but like when when we're ready to stabilize and we know what the final shape of things is so so like guide form makes sense for users but for the stabilization report i think we need uh, enough content to be able to fill the reference with all the things we need 
um, like all the tests, all the test files, all the bugs that exist that are unresolved, uh, like document the behavior as thoroughly as possible. Um, sorry to interject for a moment, but I had one. I wanted to do a time check here. We have about yeah. uh, 19 minutes left, and I think that we should probably go ahead and address the elephant in the room, which is probably the biggest thing that needs a real-time verbal conversation to deal with. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm satisfied. Well, I, I wanted to make sure that we're, because we, I posed a schedule for the decision on the OE syntax, and then everyone talked about the other blockers. And no one really said anything about it. this is schedule for the lane team decision around OE syntax seem Correct. People. Well, and then we can talk I'm about kind of my finger is that we might manage to get a decision in the next 19 minutes. Maybe I'm hopelessly optimistic. I do not um, believe that it's a good idea because I think that uh, we should tell people when we're making the decision so they can continue to participate in the discussion until we do. Sorry, and let me clarify that. I think it would be nice if we found informally whether we felt we had consensus among the Lang team, which would be a new thing, and then posted after that and said and effectively uh, we could, yeah we could put a, a proposal that people can respond to i think that would actually be nice to do before i agree that would have like it. Yeah. also yeah. since josh is going to be gone for a few weeks I would like yeah. also i think i think since it, it's just starting to get out now it might be interesting to to quickly if we have like five minutes for which we probably won't uh, respond to the uh, the whole like poll that people sent out on Reddit <laughs> and the results from that because that was kind of an interesting thing to read. There were some I don't I don't know that I would draw conclusions off of it, but it was it, interesting, right? There is one item I think worth discussing out of that poll. Yes. Yeah, I. How do we want to proceed then? So I guess to just follow so the doc. Yeah, boats. Would you like to go ahead and uh, present what you wrote up? Before yeah. We... Yeah. So I mean, I still think prefix oh. wait with a, a wait question mark syntax sugar is the right choice, but I don't expect anyone else to change your mind. Uh, and I want to ship this feature, so just have to, um, <clears throat> you know, move forward. Uh, and I think that I would like to. Uh, limit our consideration to either dot await or space await postfix in Texas. Um, uh, I know, and I think that probably the one thing that Josh was referring to from the poll is that dot, this, those were the, uh, the um, method and postfix macro syntaxes were according to the poll more widely preferred. Uh, my opinion is that this is just people are wrong. Um, like not in like the sense of like, <laughs> like not in the sense of my opinion, but I think that it's like, yeah, I think it is. A, I think the thing that I like about it is the thing that I think we should not do, which is that uh, it isn't actually a method or a macro, and so it should not look like them. Yes, because a person could very reasonably believe that it's a method or a macro, whereas a person could never reasonably believe that it's a field access if they know what a weight actually does. Which is why dot a weight doesn't really like the idea is that it's not a field access. Uh, yes. But of course, then there's a problem that it does look like. That's the reason why we should consider space await is because it isn't in the existing syntax. And so if we do think the fact that it could be confused for field access is important, then we should go with one. Absolutely can't be confused with anything. I, I think, so I think that's why uh, I think those are the two that are we should be deciding between. Uh, I'm, I agree with you on the macro and the method, especially the macro. I think people are under the belief that it, this somehow can actually be a macro. Uh, uh, many people have said this on the thread. Um, uh, with respect to a space or a dot, um, I think um, the dot looks less ambiguous and uh, it also composes better with IDs. Um, so I think that gives a better user experience overall. Yeah. I, and I also believe I that there are some tactic issues with space in terms of. Uh, grouping that I recognize and acknowledge Boat's point that we don't necessarily want to discourage people from making, to, to encourage people to make incredibly complicated expressions, but space syntax makes it awkward to do any chaining at all because it immediately makes it look like it groups to the right and not to the left. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, wanted, I had a slightly crazy idea on that actually. 
Um, I noticed that the sample that keeps getting oh, no. posted in the can we have uh, it's not a new proposal. It's space await, but without the space. Uh, because I noticed that every single example that in the the thing that gets keeps getting posted in there of the dot await, every await is actually after a close parin. Uh, so one every would close parent await. Like there, are, I didn't start a valid expression, and so that would yeah. not. Be yes. Correct. So this wouldn't work for idents with no space. Absolutely, I completely agree. I see. I see. Uh, you just mean. As a style recommendation, make the space optional. Uh, well, it just well, is space optional, right? Optional. If you don't have, so you, you mean this? We don't make us. We make a style recommendation that if you don't have, if it's not an item, that you don't put a space. That's what you're saying. So so I was wondering is, that because that would work for everything except items. It would group differently, and I'm on the fence between this is incredibly terrible or interesting. I'm not following because it's one or the other for sure. So, so the, <laughs> I don't think those are mutually exclusive possibilities. <laughs> I, <laughs> all right. I this um, okay. I actually wanted to quickly respond, if it's okay. I wanted to respond to the postfix macro thing because I actually postfix macro was my original preferred uh, syntax for this, um, and I was convinced that this wasn't a good idea. Um, and I think that I, I want to quickly follow up on that because I, I think that the reason that I thought that was actually a little bit different from some of the reasons that you guys highlighted, um, which were mostly around like thinking that it could be implemented as a macro. Um, I don't think it can be implemented as a macro. Uh, I think that its biggest asset is that it doesn't look like any other existing syntax, including that we don't have post text macros. Um, right. But I think that it's, like because we don't have post six macros, it is obviously not a post six macro. It is obviously not a method call. It is obviously not a uh, field access. So that kind of falls down, and, and you weigh, have to weigh it differently based on whether or not we decide to add post six macros. But I also um, I think that that's one of its big detractors, right? Is that it sort of suggests at uh, yeah. a post six macro feature, uh, which doesn't currently exist today. Um, and yeah, I, if I agree. you did introduce yeah. such a feature which I, I am personally a little skeptical of. Um, I think that it would, it, it would be suggestive that, like, like you said, that it was implemented as a post six macro, which is not correct. To be clear, I'm, I'm highly in favor of post six macros, but I don't think this should look like one. Like, it's, it's, right. a, good, it's a good reason. Like, if we want post six macro, macros, this shouldn't look like one. It just, right. just confusing. Yeah. So I feel like reasonable point. everything I've heard from people sort of feels like we have basic consensus that uh, like, to be... Yeah, I agree like, with everything that everyone said that we shouldn't do this. I just wanted to explain my reasoning yeah, for... Yeah, no, I mean like just all the responses everyone has said, I feel like. Sure. Um, we well, agreed that if it was going to be something that already existed, it would be dot await, which seems like, like better than space await, except for the fact that it looks like a field access, and that might be a problem. And I, I would like to call attention to one thing as well, that I, so the community concern regarding this looks like a field access, so it's not obvious that it affects control flow. I, don't, I want to register that concern. I want to document a good rationale why we're not, I'm not suggesting that that is a blocker for us. I'm suggesting that we need a good answer for that. Yes. And regarding that, I think there's two good answers. Uh, first of all, I agree completely with Boat's point that uh, feel you know other syntax that conveys the idea that it can um, you know if it looks like it can run code, that doesn't necessarily mean it looks like it can affect control flow, which is entirely different. So anything short of full postfix macro is going to potentially look uh, surprising to some degree and given that I think favoring simplicity makes sense there's one other argument I think is appropriate which I'd like to get people thinking about in the background which is I think it would be an improvement to orthogonality to have things like dot match or dot if or similar I think that it is um, helpful to be able to say complicated expression dot match open brace and that would feel very orthogonal to having dot await because they both mean exactly the same thing. They both mean 
take the previous expression and use it as the argument to this construct that takes an expression. So that, or, I'm not suggesting we approve that today. I'm not suggesting we agree yeah, yeah. that thing. I'm saying, I think it's a useful argument that if we were gonna do postfix match, that's the sensible, that's a good syntax to use for it. And that suggests that we should use dot await for the same reason and it will give more weight to this is why we picked it. However, yeah, um, I think that is actually a good point that uh, that dot await is forward compatible with having that uh, sugar someday. Yes. However, I think we should, not, yeah. I, I agree with that. I, I think we should be careful uh, with how we frame this because our theme for, for this year is maturity. And we shouldn't. We should be careful to not make right. it seem like we are thinking about doing this. Anytime. And that's kind of this talking about this sort of violates the known rationale thing because we've never publicly talked about this idea. Um, uh, it came up briefly uh, at uh, Rust All Hands. I think actually uh, you were one of the people who made the comment that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, what I mean is publicly, we've never like on the forums talked about it. So mm -hmm. that's fair, yeah, there's a thread about it right now going on. I was going to say, I think it's, it's landed on the forum regardless somehow. Um, yeah. Great. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it showed up yesterday. I have a question about, I mean, I, I have a question. Like, I don't think, somewhat, I think both you said, or Josh, is there a reason you couldn't use space match that I'm overlooking? Um, I guess it's really. difficult because you have to then parse the next block to see if it's a match, like match arms or if it's an expression. What yeah. kind of expression could it be? Oh, like well, I see. You're right because they can't. You already have an expression followed by the keyword match. Right, so you, right. Yeah, I, I, I think that works either way. way. But I think you're right. Somehow it does seem wrong, though. I, mean, so I would like does. to make the observation as well that I feel like anything that involves white space separation with no punctuation makes compiler recovery more difficult. Imagine forgetting a semicolon on the previous line, and now the compiler muddles forward, thinking. Complicated expression match mm. open or complicated expression await. I'm not saying that it is um, uh, impossible for the compile to recover, compiler to recover, but I think that this is the kind of thing that led to C having problems with. I can't tell that you didn't put a semicolon on this uh, struct because, well, you could be declaring a function that returns this struct type that you constructed inside its return type. And so it takes a long time realizing, no, you just screwed up. Yeah, there is a, some kind of yeah. stuff around this. I think this is actually legal today, for example. Anyway, uh, let's not go too down that rabbit hole. One other um, thing, I have a few things about field I just want to say. I haven't heard them said, and I'm a little confused about it. Like, I think, obviously, syntax highlighting, which is like this yes. is simplest of syntax highlighting of all kind, right? Keyword highlighting is clearly going to help distinguish this from a field. That seems true, right? Um, and secondly, just that, like the formatting around dot await feels to me like we have a lot of rules around how to format it. That's all settled. We don't have to make new rules. I kind of that appeals mm -hmm. to me. But um, uh, I don't. I'm not sure we would if we would format it like a field access because that would put it on another line when it gets wrapped. I think. I assume we would format it like a question mark regardless, nice not like a field access. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah that's But that would also be more clear that it is not a field access from yes, code. Yes, exactly, exactly. Agreed. Um, I wouldn't have formatted it that way, but that, that's okay. I don't care to argue the point. No. <laughs> if we do, I <laughs> agree. That's with that's it. Like, oh, um, another good point is that it's co-located with the question mark a lot of the time, so that makes it clearer. Uh, I feel like oh, I feel like we do have a proposal. Like it, I don't see a lot of support in this meeting for trying for space await or something. Yeah, yeah. I, really, um, I think that uh, Josh's argument is also pretty strong. <laughs> uh, uh, one one additional point that I would make about uh, like um, that we can we can include uh, if we want to or if you agree um, <laughs> is that. I've never, um, there are a bunch of different languages that also have like magic fields, like Java has dot class. Uh, I've never heard anyone be confused about you know, dot class. Uh, like 
uh, as a teaching assistant for for a Java course, no one ever has mentioned that as a point of confusion. Um, I, I would mention that dot class is, is something that isn't valid on things. If I'm remembering Java correctly, it, it's not valid on things which would have fields, right? It's normally like you would say the name of a class and then say dot class. This is true, but I feel like yeah. I don't know. I just don't think anyway. But, but I agree with I, I agree with it, and it's an interesting case to consider. Yeah, uh, I, I believe JavaScript has some. Uh, uh, I don't know that language that well, um, but it, it has prototypes and stuff. I think which are magical or something. <laughs> so I think um, this is reaching time. Can, I'm going to try to. I'm going to post that this is that we think we're going to go with dot await with the justification for why, like in some sort of long post, and also that we intend to reach a final decision at the May twenty third meeting, and then people can you know respond and come to terms with. The decision or possibly convince us. Will you be including in that post the uh, clear explanation for we did see the straw poll and here? Yeah, is definitely. I think it would definitely want to contextualize it within. Yes. Like, yeah, I want to make sure we know we know what the response to the summary was. Like we know what people thought about it, and this is what we think we should do. Um, Please don't kill us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, can we close and a new internal actually? thread that we can focus better on just responses to dot await. New thread. Yeah, I think it'll be a new thread. Can say, Taylor? Oh, I was going to ask. Um, uh, we, Nico, and I had discussed. I've actually already implemented dot await, um, and I was wondering if I should open that PR or not. I think. Let me post this and then. Okay. Um, and and my current implementation makes both uh, dot await and the current await macro syntax valid, although it, it makes the await macro syntax based on keyword rather than based on an actual macro. Um, and the await macro is under a separate feature gate called await macro, which currently happens conveniently to be the name of the library feature gate so that existing users can transition over. That sounds good. I, I, think, uh, uh, I just want to point out that uh, this yeah. was specifically requested to me by several people, actually. When they when they heard you had a PR, they said, oh, I hope that I'll be able to transition gradually. Yeah, yeah. We should we should make it possible to transition if you're already using it on night. I, I will know that people like if people are using the Tokyo await, it, that will not work after this because that is actually a macro. Um, so Yeah, those that people was always sort of do we do we have any sort of time frame for when we want to remove the await macro feature gates? Like how much time? I figured prior to stabilization. Yeah. Uh, oh. Do you, I, you could, if you can, it would be nice to make a, to warn also that they should change over to that way. Huh. I I, th I thought we could give people more time than that, possibly. I would. I prefer not to introduce a warning at first, just for my own selfish reasons, because I'd like to do a soft transition of code that uses deny warnings. Um, Sounds good. Um, but then I think at some point we should have a warning before we remove it. But I guess I could just, I could, I guess I could just allow that warning specifically. So it's not. I don't have a strong opinion either way. How How do you feel about like removing the feature await macro feature gate in like one point three eight or something, or one point three nine? You mean like we would continue to allow it for a longer period of time after we stabilized? Yes. So but we'll only allow it on nightly, because we'll never yes. stabilize. I don't. Yes. I don't really care. Yeah. I mean, yeah. This is. I think that it's fine. We can. I think we can do this offline also. Um, yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Right. But yeah, we'll just make sure we okay, enable so, the correct syntax. And so, boats. I'll I'll wait for your your decision post, and then I'll open that PR if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I think that's good to. I think that it's better for people to see that post before they see the PR and get confused what's going on. Yes, I agree with that as well. I think that I think that people would react funnily to like, hey, the language team asked us what we wanted. Now without without yeah. like responding, they've gone and opened a PR for something yeah. that we said we didn't really want. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, um, language team. I hate you. <laughs> so uh, 
So uh, I, I think we can, uh, in terms of the report and stuff and how we um, uh, how we proceed, um, I think I think we can like stabilize the await uh, await syntax, and then we can like uh, FCP close the removing the await macro at some other time. Does that make sense? I don't know if you know that it needs an FCP, but I think we should for to remove the macro. I mean. I think giving time. Um, there's no reason to hurry. It's not a big yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm mostly uh, I'm I'm mostly suggested in FCP because that's what we usually do. Yeah, it does. You could be can. Seems to be cool. Easy. I'll try to make the post tomorrow, hopefully. And all right. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Ciao. Thanks Ciao. for the write up posts. Yep. Thanks. Bye. Like I'm just dumping notes all the way. All right, let me end this one. Ciao.